We are living through an inflection point in humanity. We can now read and debug the code of life. There are three reasons why we ought to further develop this miraculous technology. First, nature is literally full of bugs. The natural world is riddled with errors and mutations. Millions of babies are born each year with errors in their biological code, awful mutations that cause diseases like Tay-Sachs disease and cystic fibrosis. Until recently, there was no way to know in advance if an embryo had that mutated code. Gene editing allows us to make corrections in that code and to prevent it entirely. If we can prevent human suffering, we are morally obliged to do so. Second, humans in our current form are vulnerable to external threats like novel viruses. It's plausible that SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19, will become endemic, like influenza. But there are so many other lethal viruses that persist. You heard George explain just a few of them, HIV, for example. There's also MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which has a mortality rate of around 35%. Gene editing makes us less vulnerable to the 1,500 or so species of uh, path pathogens to humans that we know today, and the billions of pathogenic viruses, protozoa, organisms that luckily we haven't encountered yet. Gene editing makes us more resilient. Third, humankind needs optionality. The resolution that we are affirming today is that we should use gene editing to make better babies. The survival of our species requires intervention. Humankind is part of a larger biological ecosystem, Earth, one that's changing faster than we are evolving naturally on our own. It's improbable that the world's largest economies will ever align on CO2 reduction, geoengineering, or other climate mitigation strategies. Gene editing will at some point give us the chance to make edits and upgrades to enable us to live comfortably in our communities. Now today, you are likely to hear our opponents say some pretty scary th things. In fact, you've already heard some pretty scary things. Marcy has already talked about wildly scary potential outcomes, a future in which we have Gattaca-like haves and have-nots, where rich people get to create designer babies, the way that you would walk into a Build-A-Bear workshop in the mall and select all the traits that you wanted uh, to, to include in your baby. There is no evidence, and you will hear George and I say this over and over again, but there is no evidence to support the claim that gene editing will benefit the wealthy specifically. In fact, there is ample data and ample evidence to support the contrary. I'm here along with George to make the case that gene editing can be safe, but I'm not a geneticist. I'm a quantitative futurist. I'm a social scientist. And I use quantitative and qualitative data to build scenarios that model next order outcomes. So I'm here to help you understand the dangers of catastrophizing. There is no way to predict the future. It is statistically and mathematically impossible when we are looking at something with as many variables as the futures of life, where an unknown number of variables under no one person's control are at play. We cannot accurately predict the future, but that does not give us license to speculate wildly about what might happen, like assuming that gene editing will inevitably lead to catastrophic outcomes. Agreeing with our opponents today is tantamount to robbing our futures simply because we refused to change our mental models. Voting yes on this resolution doesn't automatically lead to Gattaca, to a dystopian future. Voting yes gives us optionality and a chance to improve our well-being. Thank you.